It is 11.59 p.m., which, as we all know, is the best time to do card reviews, so let's jump into it. New world uprooted cards have been revealed since the last card review we did, starting with Gabriel Heavenly Voice, 3 play point 2 3 Ward, Fanfare, use X play points to give plus X plus X to this follower, and another allied follower, X equals your remaining play points. This card is absolutely insane. Instant 3 of from me. Not only are you getting uh, a well-statted ward follower at every point you play it, it's incredibly versatile with this sort of enhance X effect where you maximize your playpoint usage whenever you play this card, and it buffs itself plus another allied follower, and it's a ward body protecting the follower you just buffed. This card is incredible. And um, yeah, 3 of from me. Device Diviner. I almost said Divine Diviner, which is not the name of this card. Runecraft Machina, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Fanfare, put a repair mode into your hand. Evolve full stats. Change the cost of a random repair mode in your hand to zero. Great support for Machina Rune. Works super well with Mecha Book Sorcerer. Um, and it generates spells, cheap spells. And as Runecraft, obviously, that's something you like to see. Uh, a little bit of a shame for Runecraft that Zealot of Truth is rotating out next set. Uh, but frankly... I am very happy that Zealot of Truth is rotating out next set. Uh, cue the Crab Rave video. Uh, but yes, good with Mecha Book Sorcerer, good with Spell Boost stuff. Not sure if it's going to be fitting in straight up Spell Boost, but definitely if they're trying to push uh, Machina Rune yet again, this is a great card to do it with. Uh, because, again, Mecha Book Sorcerer lets you recover so many play points. And then, of course, it's a cheap spell. And then, of course, it helps you get your uh, Delta Cannons back as well with the Tetra effect. So, great card. Speaking of great cards, on the other side of the spectrum here, of course, World Up Rooted is Natura versus Machina, kinda, right? And so here's the great Runecraft Natura card. 3-3-3, three, 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 fanfare of any allied amulets are in play. Return one to your hand and restore two defense to your leader. Evolve, return an allied amulet to your hand and deal three damage to an enemy follower. Yeah, great stats, full Evo stats, defensive Two for one evolve, uh, and it pushes your Riley game plan so hard. Yeah, this card is incredible. Moving on, Vice Death Grip, Death Grips, uh, six three three, Havencraft Machina Follower, Fanfare. Put two Iron Knuckle Nuns into your hand and change their cost to zero whenever you play a Machina Follower. Deal two damage to it, then give it plus two and rush. So this reminds me a lot of Ector, which is, of course, rotating out next expansion. But uh, rather than Ector, this is a Machina follower that gives you Machina followers, uh, which is actually pretty good if you want to turbo Lemonia and get Aegis down on the board as fast as possible. That's a potential use case for this card. I think outside of that use case, I would probably say that Ector is a better card. But because this is Machina and it pushes that Machina game plan so hard. Uh, I think this has potential if you want to build around it. I don't think on its own it's very powerful. I think it's okay. The good thing is that after turn 6, you can at least play the repair modes on the Iron Knuckle Nuns that you play as well, which is pretty interesting. So you can at least have them stay alive, potentially, as they trade into stuff. But I think the use case for this will be Lamonia on 4, turn 5 something, turn 6 Vice, then just get Aegis down as fast as possible. And then, of course, the Salvation X Lamonias are great in terms of just giving you more stuff to play on the board. Uh, yeah, and then you have the Aegis on board and you win with that. There's potential here. Uh, comparing this to Justine, which was also revealed quite recently, I think I am a bigger fan of Justine. And if we're talking tempo, I think Natura Haven is probably going to be better because of cards like this. But for... Just control combo stuff. You can go full control with this. Play um, Father... What's his name? Father Repair Mode on 7 after you play Vice as well. That's pretty cool. So you can play Vice, Iron Knuckle Nun, Iron Knuckle Nun, Turn 7, Father Refinement, that's his name. And then you have your Zero Cost Repair Modes. Also, potential good plays there. So yeah, I think this is more control while the Natra is more uh, proactive. Oh, hey, look, it's me. That's nice. Damien Drillarm Brawler, Forest Craft Machina, Legendary Follower, 645, Fanfare of another Machina card replaces, blah, 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 Gain Storm, Strike, 
deal X damage to all enemies. X equals the number of allied Machina followers in play. So I think this is clear synergy with the Iron Glider Elf that was revealed not too long ago as well. 4, 5, 3, Fanfare, put a random Machina card excluding this one from your deck into your hand and subtract one from its cost. So now you can play turn 4 Iron Glider, turn 5 Damien, or more realistically, you can more easily play Damien alongside Bagworm and get crazy combos that way. Uh, the great thing about Damien is that it's face damage while also dealing with the board. So this Machina Forest Craft is looking to be a huge tempo threat, especially with Iron Claw Elf. And of course, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Cleft. That's his name. <laughs> yeah, he's great too in this counter deck, just being able to deal with the board uh, while establishing your own follower presence. And of course, that works great with Iron Glider as well. And then, uh, yeah, all these cheap followers just make your Damien better, right? So I think Damien's going to be a pretty cool finisher in Machina Forest Craft. Uh, excited to see if there's any more synergy that this deck is going to receive to make it better than Roach at the current moment in time. Moving on! Rebel Against Fate, four play point spell for Portal. It's one of those duality character cards here. Choose. Uh, spend four play points and play this as Ewan's Fury or Belfman's Crackdown. Residents do both. Ewan's Fury, Mystic Artifact and Ancient Artifact. Belfman's Crackdown, add one of the Furies into your hand. This is so low tempo for turn four. I don't think you ever play Belfman's Crackdown. Ewan's Fury, I think you might play uh, with other artifact stuff. It is kind of worrying that this doesn't really synergize super well with Float. Stuff, but I think Artifact can be its own deck, especially with Vertex Colony now, right? Um, the good thing about this card, though, is that Resonance is a pretty easy effect to get, uh, unlike some of the other uh, gold spell cards we'll see here as we review the cards. Um, I think Resonance is way easier to get because, you know, it's just going to happen every other turn, and you can even induce it to happen earlier, right? So, yeah, pretty simple to get both effects with this one. So, I think this card is all right. With Artifact Portal making a rise yet again because of Vertex Colony and Kaiser Wind Conditions, having a Mystic and Ancient, uh, and getting a late game card in hand is actually pretty cool. The good thing is with this, you also get the Fury in your hand, which is a Machina. So if you want, you can use this as fodder to power up your uh, new Belfmet. So interesting card there. Moving along. la di da Jack Shuffle Grave Digger. One, two for two. Shadowcraft Machina Follower. Bane, if this follower was summoned with a spell or effect, gain plus X plus X and rush. X equals the number of other allied Machina followers in play. Evolve no stats, but you summon four assembly droids, which is just insane. So first of all, uh, two, one, two Bane, not too bad. This evolve effect is crazy because you can run it into something way bigger than it and then play a three or two drop alongside. Uh, the gaining stats doesn't matter. You will evolve it for Bane, run it into something much bigger than itself, play another card, and your board will be full with assembly droids, and you'll get so many shadows from it that you can play this, say, turn five if you're going first. You can even play Phantasmal Core, then play this. Oh boy. It's it's pretty cool. I quite like this card. Um, I think if you play Phantasmal Core, then play this and evolve, that you will miss out on one assembly droid, though. I think. But yes, uh, you still gain so many shadows from this. You gain great board presence. You gain great um, trading capability, right, with this evolve. So that's very impressive on its own. And then this other effect here of summoning it with a spell and effect, uh, I don't think there's a really great way of reanimating this one right now. Like, reanimating it with Jiangxi just feels weird. Uh, I guess in Unlimited, you can use Reanimate Spirit or Regenerate Spirit, the, the two play point spell. But I think this is more likely just going to be used for the Fleeting Joy, especially with the comeback of... Um, or rather, not the comeback of Aenea, but the fact that Aenea is in another spell card now, which we'll talk about shortly, that can give you Fleeting Joy. Uh, yeah, I think this card is going to be great in terms of, again, Evo turn, huge board presence and trade and shadow generation, and then late game Fleeting Joy, great summon to get from your deck, right? So, there you go. Moving on. Natur al Machinus, which I love that name, by the way. I'm going to have so much fun saying that <laughs> in videos and on cast and stuff. 766, Neutral Legendary, which is both a Machina and a Natura card. Fusion, Machina, or Natura. 
Fanfare, deal X damage to an enemy follower, put X random Machina or Natura cards from your deck into your hand if this card is fused with a Natura and a Machina card, subtract three from, three from their costs. X equals the number of cards fused to this card. This card reminds me a lot of Alter Plane Arbiter, but I think it's much better. Um, first of all, oh, knocked into the mic there, that's no good. First of all, it's immediately impactful on the board with this deal X damage effect, right? Um, then it draws cards from your own deck rather than random cards that you can get from your enemy, which I think is more impactful because you can draw more impactful cards that you put into your deck with intent, um, which can help you gain a huge tempo swing on, say, turn 7. Um, you just play this and just fill out your whole board with the Machina and Natura cards you draw, right? Uh, because you subtract 3 from their costs, of course. And then... The great part about this card as well is that not only is it impactful on board, not only does it draw you cards that you can just flood the board with, uh, but the draw card effect counteracts the um, sacrifice you make when you fuse in terms of losing card advantage. You just draw those cards back when you play this card, right? Uh, the only problem with this card that I can see is that, one, I don't really know what cards you can really combo with it at the moment to make it a super impactful uh, game plan, have this as a sort of finisher, play it on 7 and just play a bunch of stuff. And 2, I also don't know where it fits in terms of what deck wants to run dual Machina slash Natura Synergy, um, wherein I feel like you might be, uh, you know, what's the, what's the phrase? Spreading yourself too thin, uh, rather than just focusing on one or the other. But if such a deck ever becomes uh, viable, I think Natura Al Machina is going to be useful as the glue that holds the two halves of that deck together. Uh, so, if not immediately impactful, maybe over time people will figure out the more complicated deck that uses both traits and this card to fuel it. Um, pretty exciting. And again, if not immediately impactful with the launch of the expansion, maybe later down the road as well, because this is one of those cards that just works with any Machina or Natura card, uh, depending on, right? So, exciting stuff. Moving along, we have a Shadowcraft spell. This is the one I was talking about when we were discussing the, uh, the Grave Digger. Five play point gold spell, friends forever. Play this as Luna's Game or Aenea's Friendship. Necromancy 4 do both. Luna's Game, reanimate 4, 2, and 1. Oh, and Aenea's Friendship, restore 4 defense to your leader and put a fleeting joy into your hand. I think playing this as Aenea's Friendship is really bad. It's so low tempo. Um, playing this on 5 for Luna's game might actually be preferable to playing it to Necromancy depending on what you want to do. If you want to just generate shadows, playing this for 5 for Luna's game generates you 4 shadows for one card, which is pretty good. Uh, and Reanimate 4 is pretty good. Reanimate 2 and Reanimate 1 is not as impressive as Reanimate 3. I think your 3s for shadow are so good right now with Helio and Jiangxi, that I would have really loved to see that instead, but maybe that would have been too good, I don't know. Um, Reanimate 4, of course, can also just act as Reanimate 3, so that's also fine. Uh, yeah, Luna's game is great. Aenea's friendship is bad on 5, but if you want to do Necromancy 4 for both, that's also good. You generate bodies on the board, and you are defensively healing yourself up and giving you a late game potential finisher with the Fleeting Joy, or if you like, you can use the Fleeting Joy uh, just as damage prevention, right? So, yeah, not a bad card, but definitely if you are playing it just for five and not using the Necromancy, I would pretty much always pick Luna's game there. Also, Sword has their gold spell now, and they get three, which is fun. <laughs> Seems pretty good. Three. Play points, Stroke of Conviction. Use play points equal to this card's cost and play this as Erica Slight, Mistelina Swordplay, or Balian's Command. Enhance six, do all three. Erica Slight, summon two quick bladers. Well, very good tactics, just go face. Uh, Balian's Command, plus one, plus one. It's better rousing step. And Mistelina Swordplay, five damage short anime enemy follower. Pretty good removal. So, uh, any of these individually would be all right, but I think the, the best strength of this card is how versatile it is. You can use any of the effects uh, depending on what's the most useful for you right now. Um, and the fact that you 
have the Enhanced Six do all three is great because you get the Quick Bladers first. So you buff the Quick Bladers with this effect as well, I think. So you get a 4-4 Storm deal 5, which is pretty good for a sword. Um, and again, the versatility is where the strength of this really lies. And plus, now you can run 9 Quick Bladers in your deck, which is awesome. And finally, I think this is the last card here. Grammary, Death Teller, 2-1-3, Ward, Shadowcraft, Legendary. Invocation at the start of your turn. If you have more shadows than cards in your deck, invoke this card. When this card comes into play, if you have more shadows than cards in your deck, give your leader the following effect. Once each turn, when you perform Necromancy, gain X shadows and recover X play points. X equals the Necromancy cost. This effect is not stackable and lasts for the rest of the match. I think the biggest ask of Gremory is how reliably are you going to get this effect and how early are you going to get this effect? Can you do it before you die to Shadow's Corrosion? I'm not so sure. So, uh, you either have to draw through your deck super quickly, say with Natural and Great Trees, or you have to get Shadows super quickly, say with Phantasmal Core. Both can be pretty harsh tempo losses. Um... Yeah, but once you have the effect up, it's actually pretty impactful. In rotation, maybe less so. I think maybe you can do it with Aisha or Path to Perdition, but in Unlimited, it's way more exciting, right? Because what you have, Ector, Deathly Tyrant, Ethereal Form, Ghostly Grasp, Lesser Mummy. Uh, ha. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy in Unlimited, and it's also way easier to proc in Unlimited because not only do you have... um. Uh, core, but you also have cards like Midnight Hunt as well, if you really want to play that. Um, yeah, I think this is an interesting one. In rotation, I'm way less sold. In unlimited, I don't even think it'll be very good, but I think it'll be interesting and quite fun. Um, but it's one of those cards where you always think back on it when new shadow cards are revealed, and you're like, can this work? Uh, the good part about this card, though, is also the 2 one, three ward isn't terrible, but it's not good enough to just run and not worry about the effect like Toth is. Toth is good enough without the effect to just run in anything. Gremory, I don't think, is. So, start of this turn, if you have more shadows than cards in your deck, invoke this card. I don't know. Uh, maybe mid-late game. It won't be too hard, especially if you're drawing at a moderate pace. You have cards that generate shadows naturally without having to go out of your way to do so, like Luna's game or just flooding the board with um, assembly droids with the Grave Digger, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I think it's super interesting. I like this card a lot. I really hope it works, and someone builds a five brain deck with it. Then I can play it. <laughs> all right. Is that all? Did I miss anything? Let me just check one last time. Yep, already did those two. Blah dee dee blah dee blah blue. All right. That looks like it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of these cards in the comments down below. Was I right? Was I wrong? Let me know. Uh, like the video if you did. Don't if you didn't. Subscribe for more Shadowverse content in the very near future. Of course, thank you to my wonderful patrons. Really super appreciate you. Helps out a lot. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.